Thank you, Dick. That was very um, well, hi, everybody. It's good to see everyone here. Um, it's a real great honor to be here with uh, Governor Pritzker, with Senator Durbin, with Congressman Bustos, uh, with uh, Mayor Ali. Um, uh, really, really pleased at the meeting that we had. Um, but before I begin, I'd like to address the situation that is happening in Afghanistan right now. The images that we've seen coming out of Afghanistan uh, as the country is falling to the Taliban are tragic and incredibly difficult to watch, especially for the countless American service members and military families who sacrificed so greatly in that nation. And right now, my attention is focused on the evacuation, which includes ensuring that our nation leaves no stone unturned in our efforts to secure the safe return of our constituents. That includes American hostage Mark Freericks, as well as all Americans in Afghanistan and on safely evacuating as many of our Afghan partners as possible. For over two decades now, thousands of Afghans have chosen to put themselves and their families in great danger in order to support our troops' mission in their country. And in return, our nation made a promise that we will keep our partners safe. Many of these brave men and women led alongside our troops and thousands of them remain in grave danger as our nation completes its withdrawal. We should not break our word to them in this desperate moment of need, and I will be, remain focused on making sure we get as many of our Afghan partners out as possible and that we ensure the safe return of all Americans. With that, I'm going to turn back to the work that's being done here in Peoria, where you all know how important the work of the 182nd Airlift Wing is. Just during these past 18 months, the 182nd has, re has helped to retrieve critical supplies to fight COVID and transported troops to the capital while still completing their traditional mission. And these missions could not happen without these C-130 aircraft. The C-130s are so essential to the National Guard in carrying out work both at home and abroad. They are doing their mission on a daily basis and need to be able to continue that pattern in order for the National Guard to be able to fulfill both its domestic mission as well as its state mission as well as its international mission. Our Air National Guard C-130 flying wings provide nearly half half of the Air Force's tactical airlift capability. For more than 50 years, they've brought Americans into combat, provided humanitarian relief around the globe, and supported domestic responses throughout our nation. So that's why I'm so proud that as a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee and as a chair of the new Airland Subcommittee, I was able to secure provisions in this year's National Defense Authorization Act to maintain a minimum total aircraft inventory of 292 C-130s. I was just remarking that um, in all the times that uh, uh, I served here as a guardsman in, in Peoria, and I flew out of the Peoria airport for many of those years, um, I've never been in a room where the two-star general was the lowest ranking guy. Uh, 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 and so you know this was a big deal when you had a four-star and a couple of three-stars and a couple of two-stars in the room. Um, and this is, this is the importance of this work. Because of that 292 number, we were able to get passed uh, out of the Senate, uh, SASC, uh, Senate Armed Services Committee. We got their attention, and that's why they came here, to also be able to see and acknowledge the great work that the 182nd has done. Establishing this minimum of 292 aircraft would ensure the 182nd's mission remains for years to come, and it also means that our National Guard units across the country, especially the one right here in Peoria, have the ability to respond to new emergencies and domestic missions. And so for years, so many of us have been working to support our hardworking C-130 wing. Dick has been doing this longer than I have um, because he, and I, he understands, just as I do, the critical work and support that this wing provides to our nation. I'm also, uh, I want to say that I know especially how hard Congresswoman Bustos has worked. I'm proud of the cooperative effort between the three of us at the federal level um, and on behalf of our own 182nd Airlift Wing, but also as national leaders supporting our military. You have three different folks here. I'm on the Senate Armed Services Committee. Sherry Bustos is on the House Armed Sur uh, um, Appropriations Committee, and Dick Durbin is on the Armed Services Appropriations Committee. This is the importance of our role in Washington, making sure that we protect the hard work that these men and women do here in Peoria. When we get back to Washington after the August um, state work period, I will be working to send the NDAA to the president's desk so he can sign it into law. And Dick will be working on appropriation the monies for it. 
Thank you again for the 182nd for hosting us here today, and I really look forward to continuing to work with everyone here to do all that we can do to support and strengthen our National Guard. Thank you. We're going to do questions. We can, do, we can take some questions. Well, I, I, let me just go back to what I said. Right now, my focus is on getting the America, all Americans out of Afghanistan and getting the thousands of brave Afghani men and women who worked with, you, with the United States uh, out of that country. Uh, we can talk uh, later on about the drawdown and all that, but right now, our focus needs to be on making sure we leave no American behind. And especially for me, the priority is Mark Freericks, who is from Illinois, who has been held by the Taliban for well over a year. Uh, we need to get him home. Well, I think that's a decision that we need to make as a, as, as a country. I've, I've long um, said that we needed to have a debate on the authorization for use of military force. Our troops served with great honor, with bravery, with distinction in, in Afghanistan. They've done their job. The authorization for use of military force that Congress voted on over 20 years ago following the attacks on 9-11, that mission was accomplished. But where we are now is we need to focus on getting the men and women out of Afghanistan safely. We need to get those allies who worked with us, those brave men and women who put themselves and their families in harm's way, we need to get them out. And that is what I'm laser focused on that right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't trust the Taliban. So they, they can offer all they want. Um, uh, I, I suspect. This is my personal opinion. I suspect that uh, the promises that they make will certainly change once uh, all U.S. forces have left uh, uh, Afghanistan. And so uh, uh, they've not, they're not exactly known for keeping their word. No, I, I, again, I, I don't think that we... You, you, I don't think that the discussion here should be focused on uh, an after action. We need to be focused on getting our troops out of there, getting Americans, civilians who are there, getting the Afghani uh, forces that were there out of, that, that worked with us out of there. You know, we made a promise to those men and women who put themselves in harm's way. I, fl I flew to Fort Lee, Virginia. Uh, two weeks ago, when the first plane loads of the Afghani interpreters l arrived and landed at Fort Lee, and I went and I met with them. Um, I met a young man who had been on a um, IED clearing detail. Uh, he had been wounded three different times, and he was there with his wife and baby daughter. Um, he deserved to be there. I was there with a, a young family, a mom and her three kids, and, and the dad who had worked in the U.S. Embassy. Um, and those folks... We made a promise to them, and we need to get them out of there. But I will say again, our troops have carried out their mission. Our men and women sacrifice for this nation, and they can hold their heads up with pride for the work that they've accomplished. It's just as much as my experience coming out of Iraq when I worked there. People have often said to me, was it worth losing your legs in Iraq? It was worth losing my legs for my nation, because I made an oath to this nation to go where this nation sends me, to go when I was a soldier, to go where my civilian authorities sent me. And so if you want to talk about Afghanistan, then let's have a conversation about the authorization for use of military force. We are letting our troops down when we send them into harm's way based on a debate that was we had 20 years ago and has not yet been updated. Where we need to be right now today is focus on getting Americans out of Afghanistan, getting our interpreters and those who worked with us, who, to whom we made a promise out of Afghanistan. Because I will tell you, if we do not do that, no one will ever work with the U.S. forces again. If we abandon them and don't make a good effort to get our Afghan allies out, the next time we go in someplace and we say, come work with us and we'll take care of you, no one will believe us. It is our word, our bond, our value as a nation that we need to get these interpreters out of Afghanistan. And I will tell you that we're doing everything that we can. I can't say it in an, in, in, um, an unclassified environment, but I've been in many meetings. I've gone down there and looked 
myself at the efforts that are being made to get these Afghani interpreters out of there, as well as Americans who are still there. There are many Americans who are there that are not part of the U.S. forces who are there working with CARE International, working with international uh, not-for-profit agencies and non-governmental organizations. We need to get those folks out as well. But to discuss in too much detail what is being done will put those folks in danger because they're still trying to get to a place where we can airlift them out. I'm deeply concerned for the for women and girls in Afghanistan. I, I mean, you, you can say that all you want, but I was just reading a report that they went and they already started knocking on the doors of um, female journalists uh, and, and other women that have been working on behalf of the role of women and girls in Afghanistan in particular. So again, I go back to, I don't trust the Taliban, and I certainly don't take them at their word. Thank you.